Hey, what's up, guys? This is Dr. Vivek Palipuram, and I'm bringing you the last lecturette in ENGR 250. In this lecturette, I'm going to discuss regression diagnostics, which are oftentimes used to verify the validity of the model and the usefulness of the model and how appropriate the model is to describe the dependent variable in terms of independent variables. You will be performing regression diagnostics on all of the models that you are going to be preparing for your final exam because that diagnostics is going to finally sell your models to me and I'll be happy to use your models. I'll be uh, confident in using the models because they have passed or they have satisfactorily satisfied the regression diagnostics. First things first, before we proceed ahead and look into regression diagnostics, let's look into some common problems that you may come across with your data sets. As I mentioned before, regression analysis is used to devise a relationship between a dependent variable and multiple independent variables. Now, the key is that those independent variables are independent of one another. But sometimes when we perform experiments, it turns out that there are some subtle relationship between multiple independent variables. In such a case, if you were to fit a linear model between dependent variables dependent variable and the independent variables, you'll find that regression analysis yields you regression coefficient values as not a number. Not all the coefficients will be proper numbers. In such a case, we say that collinearity has existed between multiple independent variables. To alleviate this collinearity problem, typically what we do is we transform our random variables, both the dependent and the independent variables, to other to some, something else by centering and standardization. Specifically, for each random variable x, we are going to subtract it, subtract this array by its mean and divide it by the standard deviation of x. So this gives me another array, let's say xc, which is free of any collinearity with respect to the other random variables. Similarly, I'm going to transform my random variables x2, x3, and so on, and they will give me my transform random variables. I'll also transform my random variable y as well, and then try to fit a re linear relationship between these transformed random variables. So this will hopefully alleviate any collinearity issues in the data that you have. The other issue that commonly analysts run into is the interaction between multiple random variables. So let's say that you want to devise a relationship between y and x1 and x2, where x1 and x2 are independent variables. If the relationship of y and x1, if it changes with the random variable x2, then that means both x and y are interacting with each other. In such a case, you would include an interaction variable, which is the product of the two random variables x1 and x2. So I'm going to devise another random variable z, which is just x1 times x2, and plot a really linear relationship between y, x1, x2, and z. If the coefficients of random variable z are significant, then I would confirm that there has been some interaction between random variables x1 and x2 to influence the dependent random variable y. So in your final exam, when you devise your models, make sure to check whether there is collinearity, make sure to check uh, whether there's an interaction between multiple independent random variables. Now let's talk about regression diagnostics. If you recall from the first lecture in regression, we have we looked into certain assumptions with respect to regression analysis, and those assumptions were uh, y is normally distributed, y has constant variance, and some other assumptions as well, like the mean of y should be on the straight line for different values of x1, x2, and so on, so forth. If all of these regression assumptions are met satisfactorily, then we would say that the model is good to go. The model can be safely used to perform predictions and explaining how the dependent variable y is changing with respect to independent random variables. To perform this check, we perform, uh, we conduct regression diagnostics. One of the first regression diagnostics technique is to use uh, residual analysis. If you recall, in your data set, you will have different values of y corresponding to different values of x1 and x2. And the goal of linear regression is to devise a model that can help us predict y. So let's say that we have devised 
our model that can predict y. Let's call it as y predicted. For any y that is observed, its difference with the actual, its difference with the predicted value of y as predicted by the model is going to give you the residual. Essentially, each residual e of i is the difference between the observed value y of i in your data and the predicted value that is given to you by your regression model. Residual analysis plots the residuals and identifies how the residuals are distributed. If the distribution is completely random, then we say that the model is good to go. Model is good to be used. It has passed the residual analysis. To perform this residual analysis, you would use these two set of functions. Plot we are going to plot the fitted values against the residual values. So we are going to see how the residuals are distributed versus the fitted values, which is the predicted values. And we are going to see how these residuals are located with respect to the horizontal x-axis. Ideally, the plot should be scattered randomly about zero and it should have roughly uniform width. When you perform this residual analysis, you may look into different kinds of plots. This is a plot that you are actually looking for. Your residual plot should look something like this. It should be completely random about the x-axis. However, if you get some other pattern, something like this, these guys, then that means that some of the assumptions have not been met. For example, if your residuals are increasing with respect to the fitted values, then, they, then that means that there's some uh, non-linearity. If there's a definite pattern as to how the residuals are distributed with respect to the fitted values, then again, it shows you that there's non-linearity. If your residuals were to increase in spread with the fitted values like this, then that means that there is non-constant variance. A combination of both a pattern and the increasing variance of the residuals means that both constant variance and linearity assumptions have not been met. Whenever your model fails to perform or to satisfy such checks, we perform transformation of certain random variables so that the problem of non-constant variance and non-linearity is alleviated. Specifically, here's what statisticians have suggested us. Let's say that we find that our model is non-linear. In that case, it's often useful trying to transform the random variable y, the dependent variable, to log of y, the natural log of y, and then try to fit a linear relationship between the natural log of y with the independent variables. Hopefully, this will alleviate non-linearity. You will apply this transformation if the residuals of y are positively skewed, meaning that there are a lot of points that are above the line zero and just a few points that are below zero. Similarly, if y is negatively skewed, then you'll apply this transformation y to y squared and fit a linear relationship between y squared and the independent variables. Let's say that the constant variance assumption was not met. In that case, you're going to apply the log transformation. If the residual residuals of y are positively skewed, you're going to use square root of y transformation if the variance of y, if the variance is proportional to y, meaning that you have a gramophone kind of a look for the residual analysis plot. And similarly, you are going to apply this transformation one over y. If there's a huge variance in y, uh, in the variance of y after a particular threshold, meaning that your residuals are all fine until certain point, and then suddenly there is a huge variation in the residuals variance. So these are the set of transformations that one can apply to alleviate the problems of non-constant variance and non-linearity. In my class on Tuesday, we are going to work on this problem 14.3, where we'll be fitting these individual models and we are also going to perform regression diagnostics on them. Now, sometimes residual analysis becomes too stringent. No matter how many transformations you perform, your data may still not look as ideal as this one right here. In such a case, we go for plan B, and plan B is to perform QQ plotting. So QQ plot relies on the principle that 
if y is normally distributed then the residuals of y are also going to be normally distributed and qq plot helps us helps us to confirm that residuals of y are normally distributed so by using these two commands qq norm model res and qq line model res you'll get this kind of plot if this qq plot has these set of points follow a straight line like this the plotted straight line like this then that means that normality assumption has reasonably being uh, reasonably satisfied now remember as residual analysis is quite stringent with respect to normality assumption it will say that either it's normal or it's not but qq plot can help you identify by how much uh, how satisfactorily has the normalcy uh, normality assumption being satisfied. Uh, typically, you're looking for such a plot uh, where you would where the plot will show that uh, the normality assumption has been reasonably satisfied because these points are reasonably uh, tracking the straight line. Regression analysis is quite robust in that way that even if the normality assumption is met uh, somewhat like. 60% or 70%, something like this, then you may go ahead and select the model and use the model for prediction. Alternatively, you can also fit a histogram and that histogram should have a bell-shaped curve. If the histogram has approximately bell-shaped curve, then we'll say that the normality assumption has been reasonably satisfied. So if you were to look into plots, some, both the plots like this, then you would say that normality assumption has been reasonably satisfied. Because real data seldom gives you beautiful results. It's always going to give you an approximate result. So sometimes you'll have to make decision uh, that even though the normality assumption has not been 100% satisfied, but it looks like it, the data is normal. So these are some of the diagnostics that we are going to perform in order to sell the model to the end user. And of course, we'll provide the full disclaimer that here are the normal normal QQ plots, here's the histogram. We, our hunch is that based on these figures, the normality assumption has been reasonably satisfied. Just give them the complete disclaimer to the end user instead of mis uh, unnecessarily or unintentionally misguiding them. I think it's a good time to stop this lecture right here. On Tuesday's class, we are going to work exclusively on problem number 14.3, where we are going to fit these individual models and we are going to perform regression diagnostics on them. This is something what you'll be doing in your final exam as well. I think it's a good time to stop.